Hello everyone, it's 11 o'clock and I am so happy, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're here um, to watch me make gratitude tags today. Now I have tried this new format of doing it as a YouTube live and I'm hoping it's going to work and I can see some comments coming in. Hi Henriette, hi Deborah from Massachusetts, from Netherlands. It's so nice to see people tuning in from all over, not just America, but different countries. Uh, it's always exciting and I'm so glad that you're here. Just want to make sure that you can hear me okay, that my sound is carrying because my mic is a little bit farther away from my work area because I just have so many different supplies here because I want to show you different ways and different alternative ways of making this so that you don't find an excuse to not make this happen because sometimes people say that they don't have the same um, supplies that I have and I understand that I mean my studio has a lot more than the average person so I don't want that to become an, um, an inhibitor in your process so I really want to encourage showing you um, different ways of making these gratitude tags and different examples so that, you know, whatever you have, you can use and you can have fun with it. Um, hi, Janine. Henriette, I'm so sorry that you're in the hospital. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you so much for being part of this while still recovering and, you know, taking care of your health. Uh, Yvonne, hi. Welcome. I am so happy to see all of you tuning in. I also am hoping that I can um, have some of our community members here in Los Altos, where I live, join me in doing this so we can amplify the happiness quotient in my community here locally. So that's uh, always something that's fantastic to see when people that you see around the neighborhood are also participating in something like this. Hello, Anna from the UK. I'm so glad that you can hear me well because my mic is uh, further away. You feel like there's an echo. So let me just check on the echo. I do not have any devices um, that have sound on, but let me just make sure that that is not the case. So I turned off all the devices that may have sound on and um, hopefully that'll take care of the echo. Hopefully it's not too bad. Hello from Holland. Hi, Marielle. Hi, Francine. Hello, RRC. Hello, Dana. Good morning. Autumn, you're here. Autumn is one of my favorite people to be around. She was my daughter's teacher at preschool, and she is amazingly creative, and I'm so glad that she's here. Hi, Autumn. Uh, Mary Lou. Oh, it was you. Okay. <laughs> well, that's also the problem. Thank you for uh, troubleshooting with me. Corinne, I'm so glad you're here. It's so lovely to see all these people. Hi, Jen. I'm excited too. I love this idea of gratitude tags. Hi, Julie. Thank you for confirming that there's no echo. I'm also kind of um, overwhelmed by how many people signed up for this free demo. I sent that email out. Um, I had posted a message on my private Facebook group, which is mansimakes.com. Actually, if you're not part of it, um, you should join that. And this is a scene uh, from my workstation. Um, so you can have a look at what I have going on over here uh, in terms of supplies. Let me turn this around because I feel like you're seeing it the wrong way now. There we go. So um, I have a private Facebook group, uh, Mansi Makes With You. You can just search for it. And I posted this idea on Mansi Makes With You. And I got a very, very positive response from everyone and people wanted to partake and make these gratitude tags. And I'd shared a story about a mammogram uh, visit and how the lab tech had kept the gratitude tag I gave her two years ago. And I've had similar stories from, you know, grocery clerks and other people, um, the trash, the dump truck, truck driver, um, the garbage truck driver, our mail person, our food delivery people, you know, you keep coming across these people and they're always so surprised when you hand them a thank you card. I gave a thank you tag to a crossing guard yesterday and I gave her the thank you tag and she looked at me and she looked down and she goes, it's for me? And I said, yeah, you're here every day keeping us safe and I just wanted to say thank you. And she just, her eyes teared up and she wanted to give me a hug, but she couldn't give me a hug. And 
it just warms my heart that people are not expecting to be acknowledged, let alone appreciated. And when a random person comes and says thank you to them and actually gives them something tangible, it makes them seen. It makes them feel like what they're doing is valuable. And what a blessing to be able to have someone experience that. And my heart is just so full when every time I see that expression in their eyes and it's just it's 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 really heartwarming so if you haven't done this ever I know it feels like something uh, strange you know going up to a stranger and giving them a thank you tag it, it takes a fair amount of courage it did initially for me also I am not a very um, social person I'm not an extrovert by nature so it takes a lot of courage but you have to remind yourself you're doing an act of kindness and it's something that they're going to appreciate I have not yet had a single person say to me that no, I don't want that. I have never had that happen in the three years, almost three years that I've been doing this. And I did when I, when I went to jury duty the other day and I gave the lady there, the clerk there, who helped me um, figure out which room to go to, the thank you tag. She, she folded her hands and she said, I am so sorry, but I cannot accept anything. I know you're trying to be really nice and kind and I really appreciate that you thought of giving me a gratitude tag, but I cannot take this. But please know that this just made my day. I've had that, but I've never had anybody say, no, back off. So I know it might take some courage and uh, it lasts longer than cookies. <laughs> uh, it just, it's something that people treasure. So I'm glad you're here. And I've given people around six minutes to tune in. So I'm sure people will be streaming in. We have about 50 people watching live right now. So I think it's a good idea to get started. I'm just going through the list again and uh, seeing if there are more people. Hi, Mary. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Mary Lou. Hi, Claudia. Uh, hi, Yvonne. Again. Hi, Pam. Hi, Janine. Hi, Debbie. And um, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of examples of different kinds of tags. I'll show you the supplies I'm using. After this live ends, I will send you a hyperlinked email that has a link to the exact supplies I used. That does not mean, and I'm going to say this very, very clearly right now up front and throughout, it does not mean that the links you receive to shop for products need to be clicked. Those products need to be purchased. It does not mean that. It just means there's a handy reference for you to see what I used, but I highly encourage use what you have. I know I have a problem. I buy everything that everybody has and I want to buy that. I'm trying to curb that. Uh, desire in me this year and trying not to just go overboard and buy everything. So um, my my goal is to not buy anything in 2021. And, you know, I have a list, growing list for 2022. But just hold on to the list. You have it if you need it, but you don't have to purchase everything that's on it. There might be things that you think, oh, this will be good to have. And you know that you're going to use it for multiple projects. I don't want people to start buying stuff that is project specific. I try to discourage that a lot. So that's my um, warning for when you get the email after with the links. Okay, so here is my workstation. Oops, I just want to be able to... I don't know why it's not doing a picture-in-picture. Picture. I guess it won't do a picture-in-picture. Picture. Well, you can still hear me. So this is my workstation, and I have a couple of examples here. So I, when I first started making these thank you tags this year, I was making these that have... Um, kind of painted background with some textures. It has texture paste, it has stencils, it has acrylic paint. It has some washi tape, it has some doodling, and it has this, I don't know if you can see the dimension, but this is foam. So it's craft foam, kids foam, and I just die cut the word thanks and I glued that on. And then I just added, you know, a ribbon and a reinforcer here with my tag puncture. And I just do this. And when I'm handing the tag out, if I have time, I usually write something positive, um, something that I feel the person might need to hear that day based on what they're looking like. You know, you have some time when you're standing at the checkout line at a grocery store. So I'm able to do that sometimes, other times I'm not. And it just says handmade with love. So that's an example of what I have been doing. And you can, you can see this is all from one sheet of paper, but they look very, very different. And that's because, you know, I randomly paint on that sheet of paper. I'm not thinking of anything. I'm just using colors. And 
Again, same sheet of paper, and you see how different each one of these is. So you can make them really, really different, even though they're all from the same sheet of paper. If, and even if you're doing assembly line, which is what this was, kind of, I was sticking washi tape on each tag, I was doodling on each tag, I was adding embellishment mousse or glitter on each tag, and then I added the die cut on each tag. So you can have them spread out. You can do 10 tags at a time and do it assembly line, but still each one of them will look different because inherently the background is going to be different. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it was what I did yesterday. Now this is a brayer sheet. So those of you familiar with gel plate printing will know what a brayer sheet is. It's the sheet on which you wipe off the excess paint from the brayer. Well, this is the sheet that I wipe off the excess paint from the brayer and I don't throw them. And I had done this on thick cardstock, so it works as a tag. And then I just doodled flowers and colored with a color pencil, added some um, dots with nouveau drops and glitter dots. And then instead of doing a die cut, I stamped out thank you, which may be a faster thing to do. If you also, if you don't have a die cut machine, you don't have to buy one. You can also just handwrite with a calligraphy pen or just with a simple pen. Just handwrite the word thank you, tear it off and stick it on. It really is so, so simple. You know, it doesn't have to be one way. So I figured I'd show you a couple of examples of how you can do it different. You don't have to do it my way. You can do it your way, depending on what supplies you have. Another thing you could do is go bigger. If you don't have a tag puncher and you don't have something that makes this shape of tags, it's fine, buy store-bought tags, pre-made tags. They come in all kinds of different sizes. You can buy them in bulk, even from Amazon. You can, they can be heart-shaped. They don't have to be a tag shape. They can also be bigger tags. They can be medium tags. They can be whatever you want them to be. You can also take a sheet of paper, take scissors, and just cut it out like a bookmark, and then cut it out again, and then just round out the corners with scissors, punch a hole with a puncher, and make a tag. So. The idea is to make it easy for yourself because you can make it as complicated as you can. You know, there's no stopping. Once you, once I get started on some of these, it can become very, very complicated, but it doesn't have to be. It can be really easy. And I also wanted to show you what my daughter makes. So this is my seven-year-old. This is how she makes her thank you tags. It has nothing to do with what I do. You know, this is her style. This is her way of saying thanks. And I noticed that in some of these on the back, she wrote, thank you for what you do. She uses her stamps to make some of these. So this is a stamp set she bought with her own money. And, you know, she colored with colored pencils and that's her tag. And then she wrote something on the back. Same thing here. She came up with the idea when she saw mine. And she just kind of did her random um, abstract painting and then added her words. And she hasn't used stamps here or a die cut. She's just written it with a marker. So... If you have limited supplies, it should not be an excuse for you to not make these. Remember, no matter what you make, the person who is going to receive them is going to be grateful. And you are, you know, increasing the happiness quotient, as I keep saying, in your community. So there shouldn't be any excuse to not do this. And you're here, so you already have the motivation and want to do it, which is great. So I'm going to demo a couple of ways to make this and um, I'll give you a couple of ideas and if you have questions as we go along I'm able to read the comments so I should be able to answer them and if I miss a question and um, other community members have an answer please feel free to help each other out also. All right so this is a gel plate this is a 9 by 12 jelly arts or is it a 9 by 12 I think it's a 9 by 12 jelly arts gel plate or no the 9 by 12 is this this is an 8 by 10 jelly arts gel plate. I always get confused in my sizes between my paper and my gel plates. 8 by 10 jelly arts gel plate, 9 by 12 sheet of paper. This is Strathmore mixed media paper. It's relatively thick. It's like cardstock paper, but not something too, too thick. So um, you want something stable enough. You could also use a very thick paper, except my hands are not very good at punching down on very thick paper. So I like this thickness. It's just manageable for me. Otherwise, my my palms start hurting when I'm punching out too many of these gratitude tags. So I have this sheet of paper. I have my gel plate. I have a brayer. Now, brayers come in all shapes and forms and sizes. I like using the soft speedball brayer. And again, you're going to get a list of everything I'm using here today. So if, you, if there's something that you're not familiar with and you just want to explore, you can click on the link I send you and you can have a look at the supplies that I'm using. But that doesn't, again, mean that you have to buy all this stuff. 
So this is a soft foam brayer. There are also hard plastic brayers. This is just a preference for me, but I like this one. And what we're doing with the brayer is we roll up and down to spread the paint on this gel plate, which will hold whatever impressions we leave on it. And then when we press the paper on, it will transfer the impressions that were made on this gel plate onto the paper. For those of you new to the gel plate, this is going to be an aha moment. For those of you who know how the gel plate works, you already know the drill. So the gel plate accepts a lot of different kinds of medium. It uh, takes acrylic paints, of course. And again, I don't care about the brand of my acrylic paints. I just use whatever comes out of the bottle. As long as it's moving, I'll use it. And so brain, brand does not matter. Um, it also does well with watercolors. It does well with uh, gouache and glitter paint. You know, you can try out all kinds of different things on the gel plate. The only thing I wouldn't use on this is oil pastels because they don't transfer very well. But we'll do a couple of different things with this gel plate so you can see. And again, I don't choose my colors. I don't go by a color scheme. I don't go by the color wheel. I just pick colors. Um, it's a first come first serve as far as colors go in my house. Whatever I grab first becomes the color I work with that day. So I'm just putting a dollop of uh, acrylic paint. This is a creamy consistency. It's not fluid acrylics. You could also use fluid acrylics that are thinner. And again, you can see this is Apple Barrel. This is kind of the cheapest paint that you can find in the market. But it works, you know, it's not that same kind of pigmentation as Liquitex or as uh, Golden, the two brands that high-end brands, but you don't have to have high-end brands to do art. You can do art with whatever you have. As long as you're creating something and it spreads joy, it's fine. It doesn't matter what it is that you are using to make your end product. I love these, um, and if you've taken any classes with me, you know how much I love my color shift paints. I love them because they are just so vibrant and they have this beautiful metallic sheen to them, which you'll see up here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just brayer the, move the roller, the brayer, over my gel plate and lift up with every stroke and come back, lift up with every stroke and come back. As the brayer spreads the paint on the gel plate, there will be some excess which I will roll off onto this sheet of paper. I will not throw this sheet of paper because this is also going to become tags, right? Don't throw away anything because you'll find that as your paint goes on this, it creates patterns that you won't be making on this. So let me just demo it instead of talking about it. So rolling back and forth, just spreading the yellow here, and then I'll spread the white here. So some bit of yellow went in there with the yellow. And then I have my pink mixing in. Just up and down, up and down. I just love how therapeutic this feels. And now I have too much because you can see all the wrinkles kind of forming on the brayer, which means that now I just roll the excess off and see what I mean by the pattern. You're not gonna be able to make that pattern here on the gel plate, you won't be able to make that pattern here. You only are able to make that pattern on your brayer sheet. And it might look really ugly right now, and that's totally fine. It doesn't have to look pretty. We're just making a background, an abstract background off of which we will start working on our tags. I'm taking this sheet of paper, it's blank on both sides. I'm gonna press this down, line it up with the edge of the gel plate. It's not gonna fit all the way because the gel plate is smaller by a couple of inches. And I'm just gonna massage really, really well. Now, this is the point where if you want very clean um, backs for your tags, you might want to use another sheet of paper and then press down hard. I actually feel some of these marks that kind of transfer over from my fingers make it authentic. It gives it a more of a handmade feel. And there you have it. That's your background. And what I meant by the color shift paint, you can see, I don't know if the light is catching it, but it kind of, when I tilt it, it has a metallic sheen to it and it kind of changes color and it's kind of infused throughout. So you see how easy it is to make an abstract background or two by using a gel plate, which is why it's one of my favorite tools in my craft room to use is the gel plate. Now I do have these edges here. I don't want to waste paper, so I'm going to use up those edges as well. And I feel like I have too much pink, so this time I'm just going to spread a bit more yellow. So we have kind of a happy background. I call yellow my happy color. 
a happy background to go with. And I also have some of this um, royal blue. It's a dimensional pearl scent paint. And usually what you see me do is um, add dots for embellishing the tag at the end. But you don't just have to use it for that. You can also use this on your gel plate and spread that around and it'll give a completely different look and feel. So, you know, play with the things that you have. I have all of these jacquard paints, metallic paints that I don't use. I have acrylic inks that I could use on the gel plate. There are so many things that you have that you don't necessarily think about sometimes and you use them only one way because that's just the way they're marketed. You don't have to limit yourself to that. Just remember that it's, you know, um, a supply and you can decide if you want to use it differently. Why not? What's stopping you? So experimentation is key and using your supplies is key. So this turned into a nice green, which I don't know how it will go with the, the pinks and the yellows we have here, but it doesn't matter because these are all, this entire sheet is going to get cut up. And once it gets cut up, ooh, this is going to make for a very cool tag. It's just going to look very, very different than what you're seeing right now. So I don't want you worrying about whether this color works um, well with this other color or whether it doesn't or all of that stuff. Let's not do that right now. Let's just enjoy the process and see what the paint is doing on the gel plate, how it's transferring over on the paper and just how exciting this whole process is because it's a journey into the unknown. You don't really know when you're lifting this up. I don't when I'm lifting this up how it's going to look. So Henriette asks, I have pearl pens. They're liquid and you can make pearls with them. Can I use them on my gel plate? My answer is going to be try. What's stopping you? Absolutely go for it. Try that and see what happens. It might be that you have to move fast and they might dry up on the gel plate um, faster than other paints, but try it. It doesn't hurt to try. So I like how this is, but I also want to show you how to use stencils on this. So you can, um, again, this is good the way it is. I know some of you might think, what do you mean this is good? Uh, for those of you who are new to gel plate printing especially, this is grungy, this is, um, it has movement, it has lots of different color, and this is kind of what the gel plate does. It introduces all of these unknowns into your painting. And I love that. It's not controlled in any which way. I'm just adding some purple and some yellow, and then I will stencil I'll add a stencil or a couple of stencils to show you how your background can actually be completely done on the gel plate. And then when you're punching out your tags, all you have to do is write a thank you note and maybe add some dots and you're done. You don't have to do much else. So stencils, maybe we can use the flower one here. And again, since I'm cutting it up, I don't have to worry about having one theme and I don't have to worry about doing it a certain way. So for one of these, I'm just gonna roll my brayer hard on the gel plate while the stencil is in place to leave an impression. And then for these two, I'm just gonna leave them as is and see what happens. So I'm just gonna place this on top. And again, I'm gonna press down hard, just give it a nice massage. And then I'm just going to lift it up and see some of that pattern transferred over. And because it's color shift, it has a nice metallic sheen to it. The hearts didn't really come as much as the flowers did. So it's possible that as I was talking, the paint dried up. But you see how this impression is still there on the gel plate. You can still see the hearts, you can still see the flowers. So what we can do is, and I also wanted to show you some of that weaving pattern from that other stencil is here. So a couple of hidden textures right here. And what we can do is we can actually pull, this is called a coast print that is on the gel plate right now. And we can pull that with another color. So I'm thinking maybe do a little bit of pink and we'll pull that over onto our paper. And also in the meantime, I have this right here, this stencil right here. So I'm seeing if I can transfer any paint from that. So if I keep my stencil here and roll my brayer over, I can maybe make some cool patterns over here too. 
So you see how your brayer sheet doesn't just have to be a discarded sheet of paper. It can become a work of art unto itself. There we go. So just roll this paint over and see if we can pick up any of these flowers and leftover hearts onto our gel plate printed sheet. So I'm just going to take this part where I wanted the hearts to come and I'm going to place just that part over and see if some of those hearts get transferred. I guess they just don't want to come over. They don't want to transfer over. I can see some sheen, but that's about all there is. Well, that's fine. And I'm going to take this now and I'm going to see if I can get some of those flowers onto this. So I got some texture, some flowers. And again, I don't want you getting disappointed or discouraged as you're making this, especially if you're new to the gel plate, because the gel plate is unpredictable and that is something you just have to embrace with it. Not always will your plans go per plan. <laughs> if you use water-based ink on the gel plate, you use a glaze or something so it doesn't bleed if it would get wet. Um, I do use water-based ink on the gel plate and I don't use a glaze. It does bleed when it gets wet and that is what I like about it because it's able to capture the bleeds on the paper uh, unless I'm understanding the question wrong. So if that is something that you want to see, I can actually use the gel plate with a water-based ink and just show you. So now here's our brayer sheet and then Here's our gel plate printed sheet. So we've got two sheets now that are our backgrounds to work with, with the gel plate, right? Now, if you don't have a gel plate, actually, let me answer Rebecca's question about the water base. Let me get another sheet of paper. So water-based inks are great for the gel plate because they actually require very less work. So these are water-based inks. These are stamping inks, and you just kind of dab them on to your gel plate. You know, any order, any color, doesn't matter. It's all abstract anyway. Just choose the colors you like or whatever's on top. Grab that and go with it. I'm not really even thinking about what I'm doing here. I'm just dabbing it on to my gel plate. And I have, you know, pink and yellow and red and blue, kind of mostly covered up the gel plate right? You can do two things. You can squirt water on this right now and the inks will bleed and then you can pick it up. Or you can just pull a print like that. You can squirt water on top and you can make it bleed, right? Now there's still a lot of ink over here. I don't know if you can see, but there's still a lot of ink over here. So what we can do is we can take another sheet of paper. We can squirt some water onto the gel plate, which will make the inks react because they're water reactive. And you can also use watercolor paper actually for these experiments so that your um, paper absorbs all of that. And so you get a completely different effect when you do that on the gel plate. So for the sake of comparison, if you lift a print off with your ink pad on the gel plate and you squirt water on it after, that's the effect you're getting. You're getting more intense ink and you're getting some bleed. When you squirt the water onto the gel plate and then you lift up the inks, you're not getting that intense color. You're getting more of an amorphous watercolor look without having to do watercolors. Right? So completely different effects. And you can actually just keep going back and keep lifting color off of the gel plate until your sheet is covered or there's no more color left to continue making your abstract pattern. And people often forget that you can always press just some parts of your paper onto your gel plate. You don't always have to press the entire sheet. So you can get impressions for specific parts of your paper. You don't have to go all in all the time. So you can play around with it and cover up this entire sheet. And then suddenly you have one more background 
And now if you wanted to put acrylics on top of this, you can totally do that. So let's see, maybe I'll use a different color shift. I'll use an aqua color shift. I love this one, the aqua shimmer. It has like green and blue in it. It's really pretty. So maybe I'll use some of this and then we do need our brayer back. I'm not taking a lot of paint because I don't have my uh, excess paint brayer sheet around. So I'm just taking a little bit of paint and I'm just gonna brayer it all over, over here. And then I'm going to maybe put this pattern, pattern on. Do that over there in bits and pieces. And then I'm just gonna put that same paper down. Now it's still wet, so some of that wetness from the paper will transfer onto the gel plate. You can totally, this is mixed media, you can totally mix and match what you do on the gel plate. And you can create effects that would be so hard to create if you were just doing it with paint. So, you can, you know, seal this stuff. You, can, you, I mean, it's up to you. You can do micro glaze on it. You can use hairspray on it. You can seal it many different ways. You can even put wax on it if you want, but it's just so easy. Okay, so these are like four backgrounds we've done in literally 15 minutes with the gel plate. And now I'm gonna put the gel plate away and talk to people who don't have a gel plate or who don't want to buy a gel plate and just want to use the supplies that they have on hand and what can they do. So my biggest trick and secret is I take a sheet of paper and I just plop pins on it. So I've got my sheet of paper there. I have my paints here. And some people are horrified when I do it, but try it if you haven't because this is something that I learned from my preschool kids. They love using their hands with paint. They love smearing paint around. And I used to do it with them when I used to be the art volunteer at preschool. They taught me how to be free with their hands and just enjoy the process. And I will forever be indebted to all those little three-year-olds and four-year-olds for teaching me how freeing this is and how amazing this is. Now, of course, you can use a sponge if you don't like using your hands. Try using your hands though. It's really fun. And all you do is pick up paint. You don't have to do circles. You can do straight up and down. You can do blotches. You can dab, dab. I mean, there's just play, just play. Just be childlike in your exploration and you will make a unique background that even you cannot replicate. And that is the beauty of it. And all my fingerprints are going on this. And this is, it's fine. I mean, I'm in a tapping mood today, so I'm tapping. Um, on Monday when I did a demo, I wasn't feeling like tapping and nobody heard me tapping that day. I was making a background again with my fingers, but I just wanted a massage the paint onto the paper that day, which is what I did. Today, this is feeling like the movement or the motion my body wants today. So this is what I'm doing today. But again, as you can see, it's an abstract background that gets created literally with zero tools, right? It's, or if you want, use a sponge. Now I have some excess uh, white paint from earlier on this. So I'm just gonna use that to go around some areas and you can see how that's creating this nice amorphous looking texture on the sides here but again you have to think about this not being a painting in and of itself it is the process that you're enjoying because this painting is going to get cut up into many different gratitude tags and they will all find a home a different home so all you're doing is basically having fun in this process, infusing it with positivity and kindness and gratitude as you're doing it. Because all the feelings you're feeling right now making these 
They're all positive feelings and they are getting embedded through your fingers. That energy is going into this paper and that is what those people are going to experience when you give it to them. So have fun. That's the main thing. The one thing you don't want to do is not have fun. Now, this is with acrylics. Now, if you have some scribble sticks or some crayons, go ahead and scribble, you know, just use some that because why not? It's just all for fun. This is supposed to be therapeutic and good for the soul. It doesn't have to be a certain way. So I am mixing, I mixed, I have my acrylic paints over there and then these are water soluble crayons and pencils that I'm using all around my edges and sometimes in the middle. You can just kind of make whatever you want with this. Sometimes I will take, looks like a comb and just drag it through. It's this simple tool if you don't have it. It comes with the Jelly Arts gel plates, but if you don't have it, you can always just use a comb and drag it through, right? So just have fun with it. Don't get caught up in all the rules that come along with art making, because really there shouldn't be any rules when it comes to art. It's, a, it's an expression of your heart and it should not be bound in any way is my take on art. It should be a very, very free expression of who you are, what you're feeling in the moment, and just kind of going with the flow, you know? Now I feel like doing this, so that's what I'm doing. I don't, we have, I just don't have a way of explaining it, and I'm okay with not having an answer to the question of why do you do this a certain way, because I don't know honestly why I do it a certain way in the moment on that day, because I might not do it this way tomorrow or even an hour from today. It's just what I'm feeling in the moment, and this is an honest expression or representation of that through colors on paper. That's all this is. That is all there is to it. It is, doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to have a deeper meaning. It can be just as simple as being in the moment with your art and creating it. Okay, so that's another background that's done. So we have one. Two, I'm wary of putting anything on top of this because this is still pretty wet. So I'm just gonna put this on the side, but this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and it's 11.37. So I think it took all of what, 20 minutes to make all of these backgrounds many different ways. And you get the idea. You don't have to follow any of these processes. If you have pastels lying around and that's the only art supply you have, use your pastels. You know, nobody is going to judge you on what you're using. Nobody's going to say, oh, why didn't you use that? No, it doesn't matter. You use what you have. That's the point. So I'm just going to clean this up a bit because I want the backs of my papers to not get too messy. I mean, I don't really care if they do because it's all made with love, but I try to be neat sometimes. Okay, so got this. Now, to make the tags. Now is the fun part. Well, all of it is the fun part, as far as I'm concerned. So let's see. What is this sheet going to look like when we start punching? If you don't have a puncher, you can just cut your tags to whatever size you want and just go with that. But I like this one. This is a Fiskars puncher. And again, I will send all the links out in case tag making is something you're really into and really want to explore. I also have a couple of other punchers. So I have a square puncher here that you could use or a circle puncher. I also have many, 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 many different sizes of heart punchers, which are also cute if you just put a little hole over there, it becomes, you know, a nice tag. Um, so any shape you have is fine. If you don't have a puncher, that's fine too. You have scissors. We can do it, you know, we can work with that. We can work with scissors. Use our scissors, cut out some rectangles, punch a hole, make the corners a bit rounded. You're done, you've got a tag. This just makes it easy because I am punching out so many tags at once. It just, you know, saves my life and I'm really bad with scissors. So here, all I'm doing is plugging in the sheet of paper 
and I have to do it reverse because I don't have the strength in my fingers to hold the puncher up and then do it. So I'm just going to stand up and I'm going to punch down hard. And there's tag number one. And you see how it has a little bit of that texture from my fingers. It has a little bit of that flower, which we can accentuate and make more flowers when we start doodling on it. So you'll find little bits of things in your tags that you might not have noticed when you were looking at that sheet in its entirety, which is also the beauty of punching these out out of one sheet of paper, because you really start appreciating all parts of the painting that you made. Now this one got more flowers and it has that metallic sheen already because of that color shift paint I used. And I'm gonna to try to maximize how many tags I get out of one sheet. So I'm just kind of going around and doing vertical and horizontal alignments, both. And just punching out all these tags. And I'm not really thinking about, oh, this looks ugly. You know, because if I'm being honest, some of them look more beautiful than others. But that's in their life in this moment. It's going to change. We change the story we tell. I hope I don't break my glass mat either. So I'm just, that's why I realized that, Henriette, when I press down hard, I realized that the glass mat, uh, it is pretty, Tim Hall stands behind it. So... I shouldn't be that worried, but I am. So I did stand up and I'm just using it in my hand. Um, and then again, turn around. And you see how some of them, because I was not planning out how I'm gonna punch these out. Some of them are getting these interesting patterns and colors that intersected in the painting. So the sizes of these punches, I am going to send you the sizes because I don't want to give you wrong information. I'm gonna have to look up exactly what the size is from what I can see here. So this is two and a half. So this is three inches by two inches. This one is three inches by two inches right now. So that's what we have. That's what I have that I'm working with. So another cool thing I'll show you right after we've punched this one out so i don't throw away these cavities if you will i'll show you some from the previous so before i made these tags i had made those earlier tags i was showing you i don't throw away these cavities so i save them and i save them because i use scraps and bits of these in my journaling and these little strips come in handy sometimes for other things. In one journal, I actually remember cutting this entire thing out and using it as a window. So, and then having some flowers here. So I don't <laughs> throw away anything, which is a problem. But you get so much out of one sheet of paper. I mean, I haven't even gone through the middle yet. I need to cut this out with scissors and then cut out. But I also wanted to punch out some other sheets so that we can see how different our tags can look. So let's see this one. This one is going to look very, very different and very, very cool. The tags for this. So you see how you can have completely different looking tags in a very, very small art session just by using some very, very simple techniques. This is not anything complicated. I just love this one. This has just such cool, and it picked up like textures from earlier. So it has like patterns in between those lines. It's just really cool. And the other thing too is, you know, sometimes people that you give these to will not appreciate of the colors, will not appreciate the layers that you've created, will not, you know, they're not looking at the art. They are looking at the sentiment. Okay, this feels like this is stuck. It needs to be placed down. Okay, my tag puncher just got stuck. 
so it's not the spring just kind of went and it happens from time to time which means I need a stamp on it so I don't know if I should do that right now oh I just did okay so sometimes it will get stuck and you will need to stamp on it <laughs> still cut it out so that's fine but the spring becomes loose I found at times and then it's just a matter of getting the paper out getting the spring to work again so that's I'm glad this happened because this is something that does happen often with punchers with punching machines just something to be aware of I'm not going to deal with that right now because oh but I have to don't I because I have to make my holes and I was hoping to use this to show you oh this is just so badly stuck so what happens is this gets stuck and then I have to stamp on it or stomp on it and then and or get my husband to get his wrench or plier out and he fixes it and then we put wax paper and then punch out some wax paper and that greases the whole thing and it works again but okay deep breath for those of you who don't have tag punchers you won't have this problem so it's all good so i do have my crocodile here so i can just make holes with that so nothing to worry about really and if you don't have a crocodile you don't have to buy a crop, crop a dial. You can just use a regular punching tool. But I have this because again, remember what I said about the fear of missing out and wanting to have everything, needing everything. So you punch your hole, you can punch a small hole or a big hole. I think I just punched a small hole, but let's see if we can make it a bit bigger because I do want to put some ribbon in this. So I'm just lining it up. I'm going to punch a little bit of a bigger hole. So that's, you know, a tag now. And yes, I know the paper does. Uh, I like thick paper though, because I know that people keep these tags for years and I want them to last. I actually considered making tags out of chipboard at one point, but um, I like using thick paper because I do want these to last for people to have for some time because I know it means a lot to them. So I was saying that, you know, you'll find that people will not appreciate a majority of them will not appreciate all the layers and all of that um, the detail that we talk about as artists and crafters but you know what I think it's okay I don't think that that's something that shouldn't be an expectation when you give this gratitude tag to someone is that they appreciate your handiwork that they appreciate the the art in the piece these are many works of art is what they are but I would say to leave that expectation be and when you're making this art that's the part that you're doing for you make that a part of the process that you do for you it's for you to enjoy it's for you to um, relish it's for you to appreciate and the other person that you give this to who might not appreciate the art or the color choices or the depth or all of that stuff they are appreciating that you take the time to make these. They are appreciating that you take the time to acknowledge them. They are appreciating that you're, you know, making the effort to make this world a kinder, happier place. And that is so much more than the art in the piece. I feel like the art is more for ourselves. It's therapy for us. But don't have that expectation as you're handing these out from other people. Granted, there have been times when I've had long conversations with recipients of these tags asking me exactly what medium I used and how long it took me and all of that stuff. But that's usually a person and, you know, they, that's a, it's a project they want to do too. And that's another thing that I have been thinking about is not just giving one tag out, but giving out two tags. So one to the person that you're thinking and then hand them another tag so maybe give this tag to the person who you want to thank and then give a different tag to that person and say pass it on because they might not have the craft supplies or the abilities or the inclination to make gratitude tags but i know that people want to do good i know people want to be kind and i know people want to amplify that so i am seriously considering giving out two tags I now have enough paper to make multiple tags and more tags. So I'm, I'm going to be giving out a thank you tag and then I'm going to be giving out an accompaniment thank you tag. 
so they can pass it on to someone that did an act of kindness in their life. And I think, you know, that's what kind of keeps the, the cycle going. So how do you embellish these now? There are so many different ways of embellishing. If you have washi tape, you can use washi tape on these. You can, you know, decorate them that way. You can doodle on them with a Sharpie. You can make mandala designs. You can stamp on them. I mean, really right now it's open to whatever you want to do with these, really. It's not, um, it's just limited by your imagination. So I like making flowers and hearts. That's kind of my go-to. And I have very simple ways of doing that. I also have another simple way of embellishing these is you see some of these have flowers on them, some of these have that. If we use the same stencil and we just use like one flower here, for example, and again, don't mind me using my fingers. They are my go-to. If you don't like using your fingers, use like proper equipment that's supposed to be used for doing this stuff. I just, my fingers are always there. So the only thing is I don't scoop out things from jars with my fingers because I used to do that earlier until I realized I was introducing bacteria into these jars. So I don't do that anymore. But your fingers are always there. So use them. I am just using this little palette knife to get some glitter paste out. And this is an easy, easy way of making your tags go faster, especially if you're making so many of them. So just taking white, because this has a very dark background, and I'm just gonna apply that glitter paste through the stencil here. very, very thin layer. And because it's my finger, I'm actually able to go all the way in and rub it so that I'm getting more intensity towards the center and kind of dispersing it outward. And I'm just gonna lift that. And you see how a plain grungy black background just immediately got elevated. And then you can do all kinds of mark making. You can still stick some washi tape or whatever uh, you want to stick in terms of embellishments and you can have your die cut thanks over here or you can stamp out your thanks or just write it out. So it's a very, very simple way of adding another layer, another look to your tags. Again, because I have this flower kind of, I'll do a bigger one this time. Let's do a bigger one. Just take that and you don't have to use flowers. Just use whatever stencils you want to use. You don't even have to use stencils. You can just use your fingers and do um, splotches, you know, just with your finger, dabs, make circles. It's all good. It's all about play. You're not really spending too much time if you don't want to spend too much time. If you want to play and, you know, spend hours doing this, and this is your art therapy for the week, for sure, do that. But these are very, very simple ways of enhancing your tags really fast. Now for something like this, you could also just take a scribble stick or I'll take a different color because it already has red, pink, and green and yellow. Oh, look at that. I have something on my distress crown. But you can just take something like this and make lines or squares or rectangles. And you know, it's like abstract modern art. And then if you want, you can smudge. You can also do this with markers. You can do this with crayons. You can do this with colored pencils so many different ways of just playing and making these your own and making them unique. And again, to the person getting them, what they are going to be looking at is your heart and your kindness and your soul. So don't worry about anything else except enjoying this process and about how amazing the recipient is going to feel when they get this from you. So here, I just used a heart stencil and this one's done, right? And then I can just, while they're drying, I can just keep working on the others and keep embellishing them. Now, what if we did a dark purple on this one? Because this one, I've used only white so far, which is more transparent. What if we did a dark purple on this one and see what happens? So that's another thing that I highly encourage for these tags, especially if you have a very tight, um, structured way with your art, these tags can be where you start experimenting. If there are things you've always wanted to do and you've always asked, what if I did that? 
experiment with these tags because you know you will have so much paper to play around with and you will maybe find techniques or invent techniques that you might end up loving or you might discover what you don't like either way you know it's an opportunity for you to discover what play means what it is to feel free in the moment and do what you're feeling like doing instead of getting caught up or bogged down by rules i'm just getting up to pick up a mandala stencil for some reason i feel called to using that so i'm just going to pick this up and i'm just going to use parts of it right here and again it's you know just mix and match play with your supplies use supplies you haven't used in a while it's all good it's all good karma it's all coming from a good place so it's all good and my stencil shift my paper shifted under the stencil so i'm guessing it's time for this to be done it didn't want to be stenciled over so again i talk a lot to my paper um, and i listen a lot to my paper if my paper is moving away or my stencil is stuck if it doesn't want to do what i'm trying to do i usually just give in and go okay this wasn't meant to be and move on i don't try to force it unless of course you if you were in my mixed media zine class on monday <laughs> it was a different story because i was willing the paper to do my bidding there are times i make exceptions but mostly i just listen in the moment and see if you know, it wants to work or if it doesn't want to work. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six tags with glitter stencil on them right now. And since this glitter paste will take a good 10 minutes to dry up, I'm just going to set it aside and I will now doodle on these. So I'm just going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to show you the simplest flowers there are to make. All you need to do is make a circle make hearts and just go around without worrying about how many petals a flower should have should it be an odd number an even number are they evenly spaced or not evenly spaced i mean if you want to worry you can worry about so many things but if you give yourself 10 seconds maybe five to make a flower it'll be the best flower ever because you will not have thought about what you were doing and that really is all you need to do not think People think too hard, too long, too much, and worry and stress about art, and they shouldn't. This doesn't even look like a pair. I don't. My goal is to make a flower in 10 seconds, and whatever that flower ends up being is what that flower is going to be. That's done. I'm going to change up the thickness of my Sharpie. I don't know where my other thick Sharpie is, but let me see if I can find... Oops, another pen. You don't have to have a specific kind of pen even. Sometimes I'll just use my fountain pen which just happened to drop from my pile of pens. So <laughs> you can just use a fountain pen or a pencil or you know, whatever you have on hand. And let's make a different kind of, this one wants to be a spirally flower. So let's make a spirally flower. I mean, there are so many different kinds of flowers you could just make up as you go along. It doesn't have to exist except in your imagination and again remember use what you have don't get caught up in supplies because as we all know there's no end to buying stuff there's always going to be more stuff there's always going to be stuff that you want that you desire that you see other people using i'm using pastels now just because i happen to see it and you know there's no end to that but if you have limited supplies if you have kids at home or grandkids at home you don't have any art supplies borrow their supplies get them engaged start making these tags with them it'll encourage them to look outside of themselves and acknowledge and appreciate people in their community it will give you some special bonding time with them you will be creating something together so you know it's no excuses as i keep saying no excuses because we're very good at coming up with excuses we're very good at telling ourselves things to put off things that feel difficult or that you know I, I don't know we're very good at that I know I am so I know that to be true of many people but you don't have to oh this doesn't have any more gel in it no wonder it's not working okay 
So that's one thing to add to my list of things to buy. Let's see if I have another pen. I had so many pens here yesterday when I was doing my zine and I cleaned up this area and I have nothing. I don't have a black pen. Well, I'll just use this Sharpie that I was using earlier. I was hoping I could find my thicker Sharpie, but not to be. Okay, I'm just gonna do another flower here. You could do houses, you could do cats, you could do dogs, you could do trees, you could do birds. You could do whatever you feel like doing in the moment. Don't feel like you have to make flowers. I'm just showing you some very easy ways of making these because I don't want that to become another excuse where you say, oh, but I don't know how to sketch or I don't, I've never done this in my life. Sure, many people haven't, but there's always a first time and doesn't have to be complicated, right? So just use what you have really and just be free with what you have. So did some doodles on some of these. Now they might look really plain right now. What can we do to fix them? Maybe I have some color pencils that I could use that I don't take out often enough. So I'm gonna take out my colored pencils. My daughter has a bunch of color pencils and I have a bunch of color pencils because we decided we do not like to share our color pencils. So both of us have our own sets. And again, I just went for the red that I saw poking out. I didn't think if that was gonna be just the right shade for this particular tag. It's whatever's poking out catches my attention in those two seconds that decision is made. So you don't have to deliberate over which color is going to be just perfect because really you know you're you're free playing over here you're freewheeling over here you're not the idea is not to create perfection i want to go blue now the idea is to have fun and loosen up a bit and see where that takes you because this really is about you making these tags is about you it's about giving yourself some time to play giving yourself some grace, getting all of your experimentation done while you're doing this. And the end result, no matter what it is, is going to be beautiful and is going to be so, so deeply appreciated by the recipient. Just knowing that I think it alleviates a lot of that pressure we feel when we are creating something for someone, when we're making greeting cards or paintings or weaving baskets or sweaters, we always worry about how they will be received, what the reception will be like. And we judge ourselves, whether or not the other person's gonna judge us, besides the point, we start, you know, giving voice to our inner critic because we wanna be the best at what we're doing and we wanna give someone the best of what we can create. True, all of that is true. This is not where you dwell for these tags because no matter what you make, no matter what your experiment is, these will be appreciated. You can go with that thought in your heart as you're making these. These will be appreciated. You, you know that already. That is a given. Because the person that you're giving to, this too is not expecting it at all. They are not expecting to be acknowledged and appreciated. And for them, your gesture of giving this tag is all they need. That's all they need, really. And it doesn't get better than this. It really doesn't because it's it's doing something for you at the same time as it is for them. So you see, it's a simple sketch. I just wanted to show you two examples here. Simple sketch. You can leave it like this. You don't have to color it in. You can color it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can play, right? So so many different ways of doing this. Does the long points of your pencil not break with the pressure? It might look like I'm applying a lot of pressure. I'm actually not. Um, I'm not applying that much pressure at all. Maybe I won't color this one in. I'm just gonna do the a shadow here. So it kind of stands against the background a bit, but I'm not gonna color this one in. Let it be just the way it is. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time coloring this because I really do want to finish up some of these ties and show you the next part of it. But I hope that this gives you some ideas on everything that you can do with your tags because there really is so much that you can play with and so much that you can do. You could also use your current markers if you have like watercolor markers, you could just use those. Again, I just picked up one random one, whichever one came 
handy. If you have Posca markers, you can use those, you know. These are the acrylic markers. And don't blame me after I send you the link, because I am telling you over and over, you don't have to buy any of this stuff. Play with what you have. But if you want it, and you have the budget for it, and you have the space for it, and you know you're going to use it, at a later stage, by all means, buy all the stuff that I send you in the links. I love these glaze pens. These are from Sakura, and they just have a nice dimension to them also. So again, you can, you know, if you have these supplies, use these supplies to embellish your tags. There are very, very simple ways of making your tags your own, using what you have. It really is very, very simple, and it can be really, really fast. Okay, so we have these kind of done. I'm going to set these aside because I'll work on them later, but I want to show you a couple of these at least. So I, my goal was to have at least two complete tags, but I think I will surpass my goal today because I will have more than two. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's make it 10. Let's make it 10. Make it 10 completely different looking tags if we can. So in this one, I'm just going to write Thank you, gracias, merci, um, dhanyavad. So all of these different languages that I know. Wait, that is not, I don't have forgotten to write dhan in Hindi. Hopefully that's correct. And one more language. Um, let's see. Any other way of saying thank you? Anybody want to volunteer a thank you word that I can write here in another language that I haven't already written? I have thank you, gracias, merci, dhanivad. Um, any other word, any other thank you that we can add in another language that somebody might want to volunteer? I love that you guys are having fun stenciling paint with your fingers. That's awesome, Yvonne. I'm just looking at comments while I'm waiting for someone to volunteer a thank you in another language. Oh, thank you so much, Pam, for your kind words. It really is about freeing yourself. And you know, a lot of people just say, oh my goodness, so many wonderful words. Dankie, arigato, danya, bita, danka. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll use arigato here. Arigato. And I'll use danka. Okay, here. Okay, so I have all of these words. That's all I did, right? Simple, easy peasy. And I'm gonna get a red pen and I'm just gonna make some marks. Maybe I can go this way. And that just adds some color and some interest. Again, simple things, right? Maybe no, that'll be overdoing it. Let's not do too much of the red. Okay, so I have all of these. Now, I'm gonna get my die cut stuff, which is over here. And I have my little mini Sizzix. So I'm gonna move these over to the side so I can show you how I die cut my foam. And again, you don't have to use this particular die cut. I just like it because it fits the size of my tags perfectly which was a great find. But if you don't have a die cut, you can skip this step and just write your thank you however you want. So I have this die. I believe it's from, I'm not gonna say where it's from because I don't know where it's from. I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna send you a link because I don't want to say something and then have people go rush and look for it and then not find it. So I'm just placing my foam. This is foam. You can also use thick cardstock paper, but I like the foam because it just adds a different texture and um, it's just fun. And with the thick paper, I always had to layer two or three papers to get the effect I wanted, the raised effect I wanted, and I get that just with one piece of foam. So it's much easier. Let me just make sure this does not move. Why is this moving? There, it's sealed now. I'm just gonna use the die cut machine here with my thanks. I like to go in at least four times. You actually don't have to go in four times, but I just want to play it safe and just invert that over, make sure that it pops out. And there we go. We have our beautiful 
things. And this is the uh, tricky part because foam you might think is very sturdy, but foam is actually when it, when it is cut up like this, the thin parts of it are very flimsy and they do tend to tear. So just be careful as you are die cutting foam, if especially if you have like very thin areas like this joint between the H and the A is very, very flimsy. So just be gentle. You don't um, have to really pull hard at anything. It'll, it'll peel off easily if there are any um, strays like I have here because the foam probably shifted as I was moving it since I didn't tape it down. You could tape it down too. It's an, uh, an optional step, not a necessary step. I'm just taking some, some of these trays away. Okay, so I have my thanks here and I'll do one more so we can have at least two tags that have the thanks. Let's see if we can just reuse this one. Oh yeah, we have enough space. So another thing I do, and I'll show you this on paper also so you can appreciate the difference between this and using paper. So this is just craft foam from whenever we ordered it in pre-K and never used it. Um, so it's just been sitting in my daughter's craft supplies and I figured that it's been sitting for two years and I'm just going to use it now. So I am. So here we have another thanks. Pull that off. I mean, you don't have to um, be really gentle with it. Just don't rip it or anything. You saw that I just pulled it up from the plate but just don't rip at it because it will tear. It has happened to me before and then, you know, it just feels wasteful. Okay, so we have two things over here. Now let's see what uh, the difference is with paper. So I usually keep paper strips. So what I do is when I'm cutting paper, I will just save these strips in a container. And then when I have to die cut little things, I just use my scraps pieces of paper to die cut. I'm all about wasting as less as you can. It's just, you know, we go through so much stuff and we always are in that mentality of, oh, we can always buy more. Yeah, but why not use what we have? Why, why just, why waste? So this is thick cardstock paper. And I'll show you, the reason I wanted to show you this was I should get my pokey tool. Sometimes I'm just so lazy, I don't want to get up from my table and look for stuff, so I just use whatever I have close by or not. My fingers, it's just paper. It'll eventually give. <laughs> I wanted to show you the difference in the dimension of thick cardstock versus foam so you can appreciate it side by side. Okay, so I have my things. I'm going to put this aside and put my foam aside and then we can finish it. All right, so we've got our things. Now this is my paper things. This is my foam things. So if I hold it up real close, you can see that this one is thicker. It feels more raised. And this one is just regular paper, even though it's thick paper. How does it show up on the tags? So if we take this tag and we place the thanks here, that's how that shows up. We take this tag and we place the thanks there or in the middle. Oh, I kind of like it in the middle, a bit off centered actually. So the heart shows in the background, that's how that shows up. And then we take another foam one and we place it over here next to the flower. So you see how suddenly just by adding that die cut, it kind of starts feeling complete already, right? But before I start putting the die cuts, actually, no, I should do this right now. Um, I'll glue everything at once. So before I start gluing these together, I wanna do stamping. So I have the intensified black ink. You can use um, any kind of ink you have. I'm not making a recommendation here. You can also use stays on. Doesn't really matter. It's your preference. Whatever ink you have that works for you, just use that. It doesn't always even have to be black ink. You can use colorful ink, you know, different colors that coordinate with your tags. You could use that. 
I will need my scraps of paper again that I just put aside. So my scraps of paper are handy when it comes to stamping sentiments as well, so I do not throw them away. So I'm just using an acrylic block and I have my stamp on top and I'm just dabbing it with the ink and I'm just going to, you can also use a fancy platform, a misty or another kind of stamping platform if you have that. I have it, but I am lazy. So I just use my stamping block and I don't need to have this be exactly perfect, but it's stamped okay. It's legible. You can tell it says thank you. And that's all that I need to very clearly say thank you. Okay, so I have two of these and then I'm just gonna stamp it. You can also have a stamp cleaner or a stamp scrubber that you can clean out the ink with. I just stamp it onto some paper towel, gets the excess ink off, and then I just pack my stamp back where it belongs on the acetate sheet and inside my cover. And then I'll take out another one that looks more like a scripted uh, uppercase thank you. And I'm just gonna use that. You can also skip this entire step and if you have a steady hand and know how to write straight, both of which I cannot do very well, you can just write out thank you on plain paper and then just cut that out and stick it, glue it on. Or if you have stickers, you can put thank you stickers. I mean, so many ideas, right? You can use what you have to make it work. You can write on directly onto the tag also. I uh, usually do the tearing or cutting on white because it stands out because sometimes in the moment the person looking at it doesn't get what you're giving them. Again, it's unexpected, right? They're taken by surprise by this gesture. When they're taken by surprise, they, there's not a lot, and sometimes there's not a lot of times you're giving it in passing for them to understand. So when they see the big thanks or they see the big thank you, you know, you can just convey that really, really fast. Getting up from my table to get a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to cut these up. Again, these are on cardstock. They don't have to be. That's just the scrap of paper that I had handy. If you have a die cutting machine and you have a script stamp that comes with a coordinating die, you do not have to do what I am doing right now, which is called fussy cutting. I didn't know for the longest time that this was called fussy cutting. I just thought it was something else. And then I realized, oh, it's, this is fussy cutting. You, I always thought it was something to do with, you know, making a fuss. <laughs> How was I to know? But this is fussy cutting when you're going around the outline of a sketch or a stamp and cutting close to the outline. It's called fussy cutting, which I'm not a very big fan of, but I like the effect it produces. I have done a lot of fussy cutting with stamps that I have watercolored in the past, and it is not fun for me. It's very, very time consuming. So again, if you're making these in bulk, like I do, think about things to simplify the process for yourself so that it doesn't um, erode or take away or draw out the fun element for you. You don't want this to start feeling like a chore because when that happens, you're not infusing it with the positive energy this was meant to be infused with. So keep it fun, keep it simple, keep it easy so that that's the energy you're bringing to your gratitude tags. That is the energy that you're passing on. And maybe that sounds a bit woo-woo to you about, you know, passing on energy, but I do strongly believe that that is what we do. We are basically just sharing vibes. And the more positive vibes we're able to send out, the kinder, nicer, calmer our surroundings become. Okay, so I think I have this. You can also use a deckle edge trimmer if you have that. I have it, but again, laziness. Hands are always available. So 
I've got this thank you, which I can place right there in the middle, or I can place it at the bottom, right there. We've got this thank you, which can go next to the flower, maybe here. Maybe I want to doodle a bit on this to make the flower a bit more prominent before I add my thank you here. Or maybe I can add a thanks here to this one. There you go. So, you know, you just keep doing this and it's fast and it's easy. Oh, Jen, you discovered iridescent medium. I really like iridescent medium. I used to use that a lot in my fluid acrylic pores when I was doing them back in the day. And it's amazing. I agree. You can just, it's a total game changer. Absolutely. Especially under resin, it used to look so pretty. It reminded me of mermaids or undersea creatures, just what it did to the colors. Really, really nice. Okay, I'm just going to try to finish this up real quick by gluing them. I will talk a little bit about adhesives and my experience, what works, what doesn't work. So you have some of that information as well. Let's just do this over here. Okay. I have stuff that I can use for later. Adhesives. So I like using um, the glue tube that has a nozzle and it's easy for the glue to come out onto the foam for my die cuts. That's what I like to use because then I can just do dots and also it lasts. It doesn't, I have had tags with me in my bag for months and there hasn't been any kind of adhesion issues with the, with the dye coming off or peeling off a couple of months later or weeks later, I should say. I've never had tags for months, but weeks later, I haven't had any of them separating from the tag. So you just use a liquid adhesive that you like, that you're familiar with, and place that foam right onto your tag. And it's gonna be a bit wonky because it's foam. And it's gonna to want to do its own thing, which is fine. That's why I kind of also like this script because it is a bit wonky to begin with, so I don't have to worry about being absolutely straight. And then just use a paper towel to dab off, just press down and just dab off the excess glue so you don't have that. And again, I'm just reusing whatever paper towel I had here with my glitter. But this is gonna dry really fast and it dries clear, so it's not gonna leave all those marks around the die cut. So there's that. And now you can go in and you can see what kind of pearl dots you wanna add or if you wanna add other stuff to it. Actually, I don't wanna do pearls yet because I do wanna use the crocodile. So let me just complete one tag in its entirety and show you what it takes. So then I have these reinforcers. If you don't have them, it's fine. You don't have to use them. I just recently got them because I was making so many tags and it's nice to have this in place for the ribbon to go through. I just moved the T a bit because it was getting in the way of the, the reinforcer. And then you take your crocodile. And again, if you don't have any of these tools, you don't want to buy any of these tools, don't. It's just an additional thing. You don't have to have it. You can just buy even pre-made tags that have all of this. You're not spending your time creating tags. Whoops. What just happened? It just came out. Okay, I have the right setting. So this is again a new tool to me because I started making all these tags. I figured I should invest in this instead of buying tags all the time. I'm wondering if the T is interfering with this because this is not punching today. Oh gosh. Well, ideally, as I press down, this should flatten out like it has before many, many times. And of course, you know, it won't work when I'm doing a live. Am I locked? I'm not locked. Okay, I'm gonna try it one more time <laughs> and see if it works this time. Maybe I wasn't pressing hard enough. I wasn't pressing hard enough. I was blaming the tool when I was not pressing hard enough. There you go. So this eyelet is now set and it just makes it kind of look finished, right? It just has a finished look. So 
we've got that and then we'll use this one for another one so let me show you what how I use my a different adhesive for my paper so when I'm using paper strips or when I have something stamped and I want to stick that on I use my Uhu glue stick any glue stick will do but I like to use this and not um, the runny glue because I find the runny glue tends to wrinkle the paper but this doesn't so I like to use this as my go-to for pasting on paper on paper when it's a big block of paper chunk of paper versus a die cut foam Okay, so this says thank you right there. And then we put our eyelet in this one. And again, I am not going by colors because I am usually doing this in bulk and I just pick whatever kind of finds me and press down. And again, this is hard. Pressing down with a crocodile it takes a lot of effort. I'm not the best at using my hands. So that's done. And then we need one more for that last one. I'm just continuing to pick out purples for some reason today. Actually, you know what? I am gonna make a color choice. Let's see if I can pick out another color besides purple. Oh, the orange might work. Don't wanna to go too far out. Okay, so just press that in. That didn't set quite right. So this again, as you can see, is a learning curve for me. If my tag puncher were working, it's a three in one and it actually sets the eyelet also for you. Okay, good, it worked. So done. So let's put this aside. So you kind of have seen the process from start to finish. Now, of course, at this point, at this stage, you can go in and make some more stylistic additions to your tags. For example, you can doodle and make some parts more prominent. You can write, you can make more marks, you can add drops, you can now again go back in with a stencil and you know, enhance some other areas of your tags. I'm just going to go in and start adding dots. I like adding dots. They just are so fun and easy. An easy addition to anything that you're doing. And I'm just going to add some marks over here because that area looked a bit too plain. And maybe just use a glitter pen over here, maybe like a red glitter pen for the center. And maybe a green glitter pen for the leaves so they don't feel quite so simple or basic. Okay, and I'm gonna call this done. So, you know, it's really, really simple. It's really, really easy. And it's really, really fun. And then it's just a matter of adding some twine, which you can do. You can also just scribble in some, some sentiment with a, if a white pen works for you. <laughs> I usually have to make it work. Give thanks with a great full heart and all your love oops look what i just did i just smeared that dot over there okay well that wasn't meant to be so we're just gonna spread that out a bit and work with it maybe dots were not meant to be for this in this area Maybe this just wanted a darker background. Okay. So that's what we're gonna give it, if that's what it wants. 
and we're just gonna smear this over onto this side a bit see if there's any remnant paint that we can continue smearing okay ah. see how how organic the process is it's just like that sometimes I'm not gonna sit over here and worry about oh no my precious dots I really 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 wanted those dots sure I wanted those dots but you know that's not what's happening so now this tag is going to start looking very different than what it did a minute ago and actually I don't mind that because again remember the person you're giving it to doesn't even know what your intention was so there we have it and then if you really want to add dots you can still go back and maybe add white dots this time And then make sure, if you want those dots to stay, to keep this tag aside. <laughs> oh, I love how these things work. It's most of the things I do or end up doing are because something else happened. And then things just kind of take their own life. It's... This is not something that just happened. This is something that happens to me all the time. And I've made my peace with it because what are you going to do, you know, if things don't go the way you want them to go and they're going a different route? It is what it is. Now, I've put embellishment uh, dots on both of these. I just have to wait for them to dry. I can't quite put a string through them right now. This one doesn't have embellishment dots. I'll put the string through first to show you one complete tag and then embellish it. Once these dry up, I'll put the string on this too. Now, string-wise, you can use Baker's Twine. You can use... Um, any kind of ribbon you have. I always keep stuff like, this is from ornaments from a couple of years ago that we got. We never used it and I've just been using it for tags. So any kind of thing that will go through that looks decent enough, or you can buy ribbon and you can use ribbon. So, or if you have ribbon, or you can use yarn, like my daughter, she uses twine, like this is twine and she uses yarn. It doesn't matter what you're using. It's just, you just want something because it's a tag. So something peeking out and you don't need a whole lot of it either. So you just cut a little bit, a little strip like that. You fold it over and you poke it through. Now we're gonna see since I'm having so many fun adventures today, if this actually goes through or doesn't. We're gonna hope it does. But if it doesn't, I'm just gonna say this was not meant to be and I'm gonna try something else. So I'm not gonna force it. I'm just going to see if it works. If it doesn't, move on to the next thing. It doesn't have to be a certain way. Maybe try the other end, which is not <laughs> frayed. And push it through. My daughter's fingers are so handy for these situations. Because they're tiny and she can pull things that I can't. There we go. So I'm just going to pull that through. And then I'm just going to tie, take, maybe I cut it too short. You can always cut longer and then just snip it off if it's too long. I err on the side of short. Okay, there you have it. So that's done. And now I add my lines and I add some black in here to accentuate my flower. It's not a lot, but it's just something that will help define it a bit more. And then I'm just gonna use a colored pencil. I ended up picking a blue. That's what came in my hand. I just wanted a dark colored pencil. So that's what I picked up. I'm just kind of accentuating around these to make the flower and I know that there was a flower here because that's from the stencil. So I'm just going to follow the lines of that one. And then maybe I can create a flower over here with the center. So it feels like there are more flowers here than there are. And it just kind of fills up the background a bit more. And because this was a water soluble pencil, I realized as I picked it up, I can just go in with a brush and make my flowers 
a bit more enhanced. So your eye actually goes on that after you see the thanks and you notice that there's something in the background that may not be very clear, but it's there. And then you can use some of these beautiful dots that I like to just kind of enhance you just add something to it. I might use some stickles over here since I happened to grab it earlier and make this center a bit more pronounced. Make a center over here, make a center over here. And I think that's what I will do. Maybe make some lines. Glitter just changes everything, doesn't it? Done. So you have another thank you tag that looks very different from a thank you tag. I'm messing up all my dots as I'm picking these up. Okay. Yeah, that's what I say, Claudia. I meant to do that. Nobody knows. Nobody's any the wiser. But it's all good. The point is don't stress. Don't stress over any of this. So you see how each of these are from one painting and you get so many different effects because even if you use the same supplies and the same sentiment and the same sketch over and over, things will happen as you're doing this that will change the look and feel of the entire tag. And then you're gonna end up with all of these different looking tags that you made. So I didn't even end up using washi tape. You can totally use washi tape, but I hope that this gives you ideas. I know I've gone way over my allotted one hour and thank you so much for making the time for this. This was way longer than I thought it would be, but I had fun making this. I had fun sharing my ideas and I hope you got some creative juices flowing after watching this demo and that you will go out and you will make these thank you tags for people in your community, for strangers, for people who feel invisible and you will help light up their day. So I really, really hope that this was enjoyable for you, it was helpful for you, that you will spread the word and gather some friends. Make this an activity you do with them. Make this an activity you do with your partners, with your children, with your grandchildren. And let's just make this world a kinder place. And I will send you a link to this video so you can share it with other people. I will send you a list of the actual supplies I used in the demo today. So if you're curious about looking at some of these supplies, not necessarily purchasing them, then go and click on those links. I am not gonna encourage anybody to buy anything. Use what you have. That's always my mantra. Just have fun making these. Do this process for yourself and know that just by virtue of your doing this and by handing it out, you are appreciated for what you're doing. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you make, experiment with it. If it becomes mud, don't worry about it because the person getting it is going to say, Thank you for thanking me. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for appreciating me. So take care, everyone, and I will see you hopefully very soon again with a free demo next week. If you are not part of Mansi Makes With You on Facebook, then and you are on Facebook, then definitely go join Mansi Makes With You. I share a lot of daily stuff over there, daily creative inspiration and uh, announcements for both free and uh, paid classes and events locally as well as online. And I should have a free demo for you sometime next week. I'm doing a Zoom class for free for the Fremont Art Association. Information about that is um, in the Mansi Makes With You group. So register if you'd like. And if you're not able to make the Zoom, I always send out recordings after. So I should be able to make that publicly available. And no, I absolutely do not mind if you're sharing this on Instagram. I am not on Instagram anymore, but if you want to share your makes on Instagram, go ahead. You should still be able to tag me at Mansi Makes on Instagram because I have not shut down my account, but I'm not using Instagram, at least this year. And um, spread the word. I just want you to be able to share this with as many people as you can because the more people do this, the, the kinder we're making our communities. And, you know, we're just amplifying. I keep using the word amplifying, but we really are amplifying the happiness quotients, not just for ourselves, but for the wider community. So thank you so much for spreading the word and for making these gratitude tags. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. 
and I appreciate the time you take to craft with me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.